Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. Welcome today specifically to Just One More Mod. I'm going to attempt to build myself a unique custom specification watch made purely from parts that I ordered online costing less than a hundred US dollars and I'm going to try and not make a complete arse of it. I previewed this one back in March. I actually bought enough parts online to make two separate watches, both costing around $100. All the parts have arrived, but I realized I need stems for the 6498 movement. Always a good idea if you're cutting stems to fit a case that you have a couple of spare stems on hand just in case. I don't have any 6498 stems, but I do have a couple of spares for the Seiko NH35. So that's the watch that I will be building today. Now, I opened these parts on camera live for the first time and I was bold, a massive googly, a huge curveball, and I must say, I'm quite impressed with how I dealt with it. The end result looks all right. Let's flip the camera and see what happened. All right, so gloves on from the very beginning today because I am dealing with fresh Virgin Box Fresh watch parts. Now, this all came from the Muxi official store in AliExpress. I'll leave links to everything in the description of the video. I must say, I was impressed with how they packaged it all, everything very neat and tidy. So, I've got a 6498 manual wine project that is to come. This one's an NH35, and look at me, Captain Smuggers. I had a couple of NH35, NH36 stems already in the house. However, this one actually came with a stem, but I didn't know that at the time. So, it's a kind of oyster case. 40 mil, kind of somewhere between an Oyster and a Tudor case as it turns out, as you'll see from the finished project. It's got one of those Rolex Tudor style case backs though. I do have specific tools. Again, I'll leave links to that. I don't spend much money on tools and they've served me well. Oh, look at that. It actually came with a stem. Now, I paid the extra for a black date wheel NH35 and to be honest, that is the key to this whole project. I don't think it would have looked anything like as good the end result if I hadn't optioned on that black date wheel. So here's the hands. Like I said, I'm going for a kind of retro Tudor Submariner style watch. Snowflake hands, obviously, and the dial. Now the dial is more akin to what you'd expect on a Rolex. It's got that classic triangle at 12 and the batons at six and nine circles everywhere else. However, Look at the color difference between the dial and the handset. That is the googly, that is the curveball. That is gonna look, frankly, ridiculous. So this had me scrambling around, googling how to dye hands with coffee. I was getting all sorts of different ideas from the internet, but I'll show you how I eventually dealt with it in just a minute or so. Anyway, cracking on with the case. I took the case back off, took the crown out, I was just hand tight at this stage. I thought the best thing to do was to put the dial onto the movement. Two dial pins, one at the kind of half past one, one at the half past seven, very, very easy. They just slot it on there. And I believe the dial is the correct one for this case because the Muxi store had them organized very neatly. So I put the dial on the movement and then sized up the movement into the case just to make sure it worked. Now, there we are. I'm just checking the date. I checked this at several occasions over the course of the video. I've actually got a movement holder for the Seiko NH series of movements because I've done so many mods with these movements. If you haven't extracted the crown stem from one of these, there's a little lever. You depress the crown all the way in, press that little lever, and it just pops straight out. Very, very easy once you've done it a couple of times. Now, talking of doing it a couple of times, it took me about six or seven shots to actually drop the NH35 into this case, but it just seemed, if I got it from the right angle, it dropped in perfectly, as it does on this occasion, and it sat nice and flat, nice and snug. Indeed, the dial is exactly the right size for this case, which is a bit of a relief when you're ordering parts, isn't it? Now, I put that little movement spacer that came with the case in the back, tightened it up, just hand tight, checked it was all neat and tidy, and didn't shake or rattle when I moved it around. Now, that is what the hand looks like against those indices. <sighs> Frankly, ridiculous. I'm going to have to do something about that. I don't blame the hands. The hands are reasonable. It's that dial. Those indices are really kind of almost kind of burnt orange color, not like any particular Tina, I've seen at all. What is a boy to do? Aha! Then I remembered lurking in the bottom of my mod drawer, unopened, still sealed, I had a full watch loom kit. Now, I was sent this one by watchloom.com literally years ago. It must have been three years ago, but I never got around to using it. There is Watchloom Peter, the man on the front. Big thank you to you, Peter. You're going to get a bit of a shock when I send you a link to this video, having thought that I had forgotten all about you and stiffed you the price of one of your loom kits. 
Turns out it was just what I needed today. Now this syringe here is full of patina dye. So the way these kits work, there's three or four different colors of lumen powder. There's a kind of fixing liquid that comes in a kind of, it's almost like a glue. And then you've got this patina that you mix into those looms if you want to go for that full vintage look. And you know what? I even consulted the instructions, albeit fairly briefly. I then proceeded to completely ignore them and freestyle it using one of my kitchen bowls. Don't tell Mrs. John where I did that. So I added a touch of loom here. Really, it's not about loom. It's just about getting those hands as dark as the indexes. There's some of the fixing material. And here I am squirting in some of the patina liquid. And oh my goodness, it went disastrously wrong. Let's play that back in slow motion with the appropriate sound effects. What a complete waste. Never mind, at least I've got more of it than I could possibly go through. And yeah, this looked pretty decent. It looked like with a bit of mixing and a bit of dabbling and a bit of water added in, bit more loom here, powder it up, mix it up. I was gonna to tonally match exactly those indices. Just a bit of a miracle, frankly, considering I had no idea that any of this was gonna happen. Now, from the next couple of minutes, I do my best Tony Hart. I borrowed a brush from my mother-in-law who's staying with me at the moment. She is a very, very good watercolorist so I borrowed the, her finest brush and I was able to dab the paint onto all three hands. Now I kind of dried them off, gave them a bit of a lick because it is non-toxic paint. Then I reapplied it, gave it another bit of a lick and I made sure that I scraped the edges of the hands so there was no paint overflow and lo and behold I got an almost perfect tonal match straight away. Miracle, buy a lottery ticket. This stuff doesn't normally happen to me. All right back to the timekeeping then. I'm going to put the hands on, but the idea is you put the hands on just after midnight. There we are. I got the date to turn over from four to five, so I know where midnight is. Put the hour hand on first. That's always the easiest one. Align that at 12. Spin it round to six and then put the minute hand on. Again, the minute hand isn't too difficult. The second hand is the bit of a bugger though, so I did that one off camera. I'm sorry about that. I'm using a loop and I'm working around a camera and a stand. It was very difficult. It's always a little challenging. One tip that I did pick up from you, I read your comments, somebody says use Rodico. Use Rodico to help you position that second hand onto the pinion and then I use my plunger to just make sure it was all secure. Definitely easier than doing it without the Rodico. So a good tip from whoever left that one last time I made a mod vid. And there we are, everything seems to line up. The second hand spins, nothing fouls. The hour hand doesn't foul the minute hand and vice versa. The second hand doesn't foul either of them. So this is going well so far. Next up, I need to trim the crown stem and fit the crown stem to the crown that comes with a case. This plastic tip one is a placeholder. You get it with every brand new movement, but it's too short. It's no good to me. However, I do have several of these stems. So, once I put it back in, put the stem on, just screwed it on finger tight. You can see there's far, far too much space. I measured it up. There's probably about eight mil too much stem. So I took the crown stem back out, marked it up at about seven mil, and then proceeded to clip it, giving myself a bit of margin for error. Better to make two clips than to make one clip too far and have to go back and use a second stem, having wasted your first one. I did play it a little bit safe in the first instance though, and I had to retrim another mill off. Second time around, it worked perfectly, no problems at all. I was able to screw down the crown and all functions of the movement still worked. And just in case you're worried, I did use a little bit of Loctite thread locker to ensure that the crown stays attached to the crown stem. And ladies and gentlemen, drum roll please, that's it. What do you think? Yeah, definitely a kind of Tudor Submariner style look with that oyster style case. It is a little more slab sided though. Wait till you see when I get it on wrist. It does have a whiff of Black Bay heritage about it, the whole thing. Not sure if those hands necessarily tonally match each other, but they certainly match the indexes far, far better than they used to. Now, if you're a regular on this channel, you know what's coming up next. What strap do I fit to this one first of all? Of course it is Vintage Cross Stitch Horween. I just can't get enough of these straps. They're so versatile and they really go a treat with this retro look. So that's it on wrist. Less than $100 plus the cost of the strap, obviously. And I have a unique 
custom spec watch that I made. It's got sapphire crystal, screw down crown, there's a case gasket in there, a case back gasket. I would have no problems getting this one wet. Indeed, I will make sure that I get this one wet. I'll be taking it with me the next time I am able to leave Australia, let alone my living room because we're all still locked down at the moment. Having looked at it though, because those indices in the hands are quite dark, I put on the Collareb Spoleto in rust brown, which is actually a bit lighter than the hands. I thought that worked well. Digging around my strap box though, I remembered I had this one, sailcloth, achingly 1950s, a little bit of sailcloth with gold stitching, which I thought again picked out the colour on the hands and the indexes beautifully. So what do I think of this one overall? Super, super easy, nothing challenging here at all. The dial went onto the movement perfectly, the hands went onto the movement perfectly, the dial and hands and movement all went into the case perfectly, and that colour match date wheel, like I said at the beginning, that is the key to this whole project. In white, it would have looked like a seven out of 10. In black, that looks like a nine out of 10. And there's nice chamfered edges around the date window as well. Just enough text on the dial as well there. And I genuinely believe that this one would be water resistant to about a hundred meters if I choose to take it into the pool. So there you go, it can be done. You can build your own custom spec watch for less than a hundred dollars, assuming you have a few straps lying around. I don't think there's any anti-reflective undercoating on that sapphire crystal, but really, I'm not going to bother for the price I paid. I don't think I paid 50 bucks for the case and the crystal and the case back and the crown. Overall, I am delighted and I'm looking forward to cracking on with the next 6498 manual wine project with a California dial just as soon as those extra stems arrive, which hopefully shouldn't be too long now. So there you have it. If you want to watch a man with no mechanical aptitude whatsoever hack his way through a couple of more mod videos, why not check out the time I took a really ugly chronograph and made a slightly less ugly chronograph or my ultimate SKX mods that actually look pretty good. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.